everyone, Lisa Kelly here from Glam Adelaide and I'm currently backstage at the Lion Arts Factory with some very special guests. I have Sophie and Tucker from the duo Sophie Tucker. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. You're so welcome. <laughs> We're so happy to be here. Yeah. If I had known this was for glam, I would have glammed up a little more. <laughs> you look amazing. It's fine. <laughs> um, now you guys just got to Adelaide. Have you been here before? No, we've never been here before. We got in last night. No? Yeah. No? Uh, you hear, do you get to see anything while you're here, or is it really a fly-in, fly-out kind of thing? It's almost always a fly-in, fly-out kind of thing, but I did take a walk this morning. I went to a park, <laughs> and I went and got an acai bowl, Ooh. and I can't tell you exactly where it is that I went, because I just walked somewhere near the hotel, but it was amazing. We've got a lot of great parks, so you've done well. <laughs> it reminded me of so many different places all in one. I was like, it kind of reminded me of, of Canada. Mm -hmm. It's a place I've been in Canada. It kind of reminded me of randomly we were just in Romania and so <laughs> there were parts of it that I was like, are we in Romania? <laughs> there were parts that felt like Germany. I get and German then there were parts, vibes. It was so it I was, was getting like, German vibes. It was, this is the most interesting place. I don't know if it's just where our hotel is or what, but like the <laughs> architecture was really interesting. Yeah. And yeah, I couldn't I was like if we had had more time, what would be the first thing you would have told us oh, to do? Oh, now you're asking me the questions. <laughs> um, we've well, obviously got to check out the wineries. So if you guys ever come uh, back, Adelaide's wine region is amazing. Um, beaches, if you come back in the summertime, mm -hmm. standout beaches. So the, the, oh. when we flew in, we were when we flew in on the plane, we were all like, "Wow, yeah. the beaches look beautiful," and we were kind of surprised. I'm yeah, like, they're they're world class beaches. You guys will have to come back. We do have to. Right? Yeah. Now, you just got back from Tomorrowland, which looked insane. Talk us through it. How was it? It was, it was insane. <laughs> it was really fun. That place is so crazy. That festival is like the epitome of just every detail, like everything thought out. I mean, I guess it's its 16th or 17th year, mm -hmm. but like it feels like it's its 100th year. <laughs> they just, like every trash can is decorated. Every like, like, there's nothing that's not in theme. Yeah. It's just such a world. You feel like you're stepping into a different planet. Yeah, that's amazing. Your show there looked amazing. You've got a pretty solid fan base, the Freak Fam, as they call themselves. Did you guys come up with that name, or is that something they called themselves? It was, so basically, we were DJing every single day during the pandemic. Yes. From our living room. And this group of people were, like, in the comments. and. I think it's just because we played so many songs that have the word freak in it, <laughs> like for many days in a row, and so people just started calling themselves the freak fam, yeah. and it just stuck. It felt right. Yeah. It, it seems right. right. Yeah. 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 Now, you, like you said, you did perform every day on Facebook during the pandemic. Was that more for your fan base, or was it for you guys to have something to look forward to as well? It was definitely for both. It yeah. was on Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and, and honestly, it was the best thing that happened to us because it made us get out of bed in the morning, get dressed, like have something to do. Mm -hmm. And then it also, I mean, this incredible community was formed and we just felt like this amazing, I, I don't know if this is the right word, but like responsibility to show up yeah. because they were counting on us and then it just became this amazing virtuous cycle where mm -hmm. like it really helped us too. Yeah, well it gives you a bit of purpose, I guess, during the pandemic, which is something a lot of people struggled with, like why do I get out of bed and I've got nothing to do? So I guess that gives you something to do, you know? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, now you're obviously in Australia for your new album tour, Wet Tennis. Now I've only just learned what this stands for. Do you want to talk everyone through that? Yeah, it's an acronym which stands for when everyone tries to evolve, nothing negative is safe. Which means... Break it down for us. It basically means when you go through, you know, shit's gonna happen, we we're in a pandemic, things were negative and People could have kind of just packed it in, been sad, been lonely, but instead people evolved in new ways of connecting, in new ways of dancing, in new ways of living and, you know, doing their best with what they have. And we were so inspired by that and felt like we were also doing that and evolving in whatever way we had to evolve that we wouldn't let the negative stuff stick and we wouldn't let it like bring us down and that is really what this meant and we wanted to say that with this album but we didn't want to be preachy and we didn't mm -hmm. want to be too deep because we also want there was so much deep preach there was just so much heaviness yeah. in this past few years that we wanted it to still just be like fun and 
uh, what wet tennis on the outside, you know, without knowing that it's an acronym, it's still kind of fun, quirky, and weird. We're both athletes. Sophie took up tennis in the pandemic. Everything we do is a back and forth between each other. Mm -hmm. So the tennis worked anyway. The fashion of tennis is really exciting to us, and we wanted to make it colorful instead of like country clubby and white. And then the wet also, just like excitement and enthusiasm. So. Yeah, it all kind of just tied in together. Yeah. I was going to ask you about your fashion, because I absolutely love the way both of you dress. Where do you get your inspiration from? Or is it kind of just off the cuff? Well, when we first started the band, we both dressed really differently. Yeah. So I actually think that our fashion choices largely come from our music. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like it kind of all started with music, and we knew music was like the first language that we spoke, and that we knew how to communicate. And then as we were making the music, we were like, okay, well, we want to create a whole world around the music. And so then we started talking about, like, well, what kind of like natural landscapes are inspiring to you? And then we both realized that we really love the tropics. And then we were like, okay, so the color palette of the tropics is what? And then like it, everything just kind of like was forming around what Sophie Tucker's identity is. Mm -hmm. And then we, I think, as individuals, like we, Sophie Tucker isn't like separate from us as individuals. We were just like becoming really clear on what it is that we actually want to be and what it is that we want to say. And I think for us, like bright colors, like literally the, the, the color palette of the tropics yeah. has always spoken to us. And like this album in particular, even like we were talking a lot about how much we love gradient colors, you know, and how much we love like sunrises and sunsets. <laughs> and so like all of our fashion on the album is all a gradient. Like this is actually yeah, a gradient jacket. Yeah. yeah, like that's, you know, something that we're always talking about and then we're always trying to figure out like how, how to amplify the music with everything that we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also think when it comes to kind of like personal fashion choices, I feel like, at least personally, I felt like I had a lot more freedom once I was kind of accepted as an artist mm -hmm. in the world. Like once people were like, oh, okay, you have, you know, like we know you for this. I felt like comfortable being way more risky and eccentric and uh, different, mm -hmm. I think, because that's kind of acceptable as yeah, like, like an artist. Yeah, there was less judgment then because yeah. now you were known for something? Is that yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, I always, culture well, also. I always was very different because I was a basketball player in college and I was sort of one of, you know, the only one who didn't dress the same mm -hmm. like everyone else and I, I still did it and you know I'd get shit for it especially from like my brother and stuff <laughs> but but I would do it because it would feel comfortable to me but then I wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable yeah. always yeah. in social situations mm -hmm. and I think once I felt more comfortable with I guess our career or like as an artist or you know proud or something then I was it. I felt always comfortable, really, just kind of taking risks and being super colorful. I'm also like six seven and yeah. have bleach blonde <laughs> hair, so like I wear like chokers. Like I definitely stand out anyway. Yeah. So it's you kind might of as well embrace it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now the new album's amazing. I've been listening to it all day. My favorite song is Original Sin. Um, I also love Summer in New York. What are your favorite songs? Good choices. Yeah. <laughs> Good choices. Good so choices. my current favorite, because we're doing the live show, is What Tennis. Mm -hmm. I just really like performing that one live. Yeah. And then my other favorite, I mean, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> this I is think your favorite, favorite just whatever, like for, me, yeah. for, for the sake of interviews. I, honestly, it depends on my mood. Yeah. All of them, but I really like One a Wonderful World. Too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love your choices. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think those probably are actually my <laughs> two favorite songs, but I would have to add Larry Bird in there. I was gonna say Larry Bird. What's the meaning behind Larry Bird? Well, let me <laughs> glad you asked. Yeah, glad you asked. So Larry Bird is a famous basketball player. He's one of the greatest players ever to play, mm -hmm. um, and he was uh, played on the Boston Celtics. And I grew up in Boston. That's where I'm from. And. Uh, my dad was a huge Celtics and a huge Larry Bird fan. And when I started getting, you know, a little bigger and playing basketball as a kid, and it sort of became my thing, me and him really shared uh, and got really close 
through basketball and and he would tell me stories about Larry Bird. I was, I'm too young to have watched him play like live, but um, he's really a legend, especially in Boston and Indiana, where he's from. And I always thought it'd be really cool to do a song uh, that, like, you know, kind of like the old uh, Duck Sauce song with Barbara Streisand, yeah, yeah. like something like that, but just with like Larry Bird, because yeah. <laughs> it's almost ironic because he was kind of like a weird guy, also. Mm -hmm. Like he 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 was not about like fame or celebrity or anything. He was just like a really hardworking, just like country kid from a tiny town in Indiana. Yeah. And uh, it just felt like a cool thing to do and it really brought in my past and and who I am and, and my dad even. And then on the song we actually feature my dad. Oh really? He, we were gonna look for like uh, basketball commentators talking about Larry Bird in like the 70s and 80s and then we realized it'd be cooler to just have my dad talk about it. Yeah. Because uh, so we, there's some like very legendary stories about him and my dad would sort of tell them and then we recorded him and put it in the track. So the song's actually featuring my dad. I did see that and like it comes up like featuring Tucker's dad but yeah. I didn't know it was actually dad. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Now you guys have obviously got a really... Long winded. Yeah. Sorry, that was way <laughs> no, too no, long no. of an answer. We love the in-depth answers. It's great. <laughs> Um, you guys have always got a really big tour, so like after here you've got Perth, I believe, and then you're back to the US through Europe. It's probably very draining to tour. How do you stay sane touring so much and being so energetic all of the time? Or does it come naturally? We don't. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> we just don't stay sane. <laughs> so Define sane! Um, <laughs> yeah, we do travel a lot, we do tour a lot. Believe it or not, we used to travel and tour more, and we learned the hard way that you have to say no sometimes. Yeah. Because literally, like I remember when we first started, and we were doing, we were doing the most ridiculous things of like losing many nights of sleep in a row, and then like we also we didn't have crew before, so we would set up our whole show and then wow. take it all down. And I remember just like crying every other day. Like not because anything was wrong. Just tired. I was just saying, I just don't know. Like I just, yeah. and so now, you know, we do travel and tour a lot, but I think A, we try to make sure to like do all the little things. Like I make sure to take a walk whenever <laughs> I get to a city or like eat healthy food. And like I, the fact that I don't drink is very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it's like, we also have to say no sometimes yeah. and can't be in a thousand places at once. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Anyone who's attending the show tonight, you are in for a treat because from what I've seen from previous videos of other shows, you guys go nuts. So good luck and thank you for chatting with us. Thank, thank you. you.